This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hello everyone, we're doing another Thunder Junction draft. We have a pretty easy first pick here because this is just one of the biggest bombs in the format. Um, you want to try pretty hard to play green blue if you get her, but you can pay, play blue and splash green and still play her. Harder to do it the other way around because of the double blue, but you know, she's nuts. Six mana for two six power creatures and a whole bunch of upside on top of that. This is not good and limited, don't play it. Um, you know, it's here for other purposes. Um, without our big old bomb in this pack, what would we take? Well, I think probably Beast Bond Outcaster. It just seems like it's going to draw you a card a huge chunk of the time. It does. I mean, I've played with it some, and, and I don't think I've played it yet where it didn't draw me a card. Um, so, yeah, but we take Bonnie Paul. Um, I've liked the Sentry okay. There are enough ways to buff it. And buffing it is nice because most of the time when we see that effect, um, it doesn't count itself. And because it already has three power, you don't have to do that much to buff it. So, you know. All right. So we've got another Beast Bond Outcaster, but also an Aloe Alchemist, which I think is better. That, um, when you uh, plot this trigger, is just nuts. Um, you get so much out of it for two mana. You can just run it out on two if you have to. I do like the Outcaster, but I think Aloe Alchemist is just better. Um, since it actually does something when it gets plotted. Pretty easy pick. Um, you know, Geyser Drake, Harrier Strix, these things are, are cards I would play. Throw from the saddle is pretty good too, but I think Alchemist is just better. So my experience so far with Trash the Town has been pretty good. I don't know. I mean, it's still a trick, you know, so I don't know that you want to take it over, like, good creatures uh, that you know, you can play earlier in the game, but, you know, it's not that hard to generate blowouts with this. So I'm kind of looking at Bristle Pack, Sentry, Giant Beaver, to a lesser extent, Creosote Heath, um, which is a really nice um, uh, land. Creosote bushes are interesting. You know, I grew up in the desert southwest, and um, they, there's a bunch of bushes, but they're actually all connected. So they're like one giant organism in a way that most plants aren't. But anyway, um... Yeah, kind of feel like I'm going to go with the two drop over the four drop just because of how things are these days. Prickly Pear and Demonic Ruckus are both uh, pretty nice, but we'll, we'll take the green card here. Another Trash to Town. I've also got a Hard Bristle Bandit, which gives you good fixing on top of other stuff. Um, these blue cards are the same blue card, and they're fine, but not exciting. I'd probably take Hard Bristle Bandit. Um, gets us to Bonnie Powell sooner, right? Um... Naturalist is okay. Again, I like Trash the Town, but it just, you know, it's hard to make me want to take a trick uh, over, like, good to drop. Um, okay, so I like Spinewood's Armadillo a lot. It's huge when you play it. It gives you really good fixing. You know, so far we're not taking any blue cards, which, like I said, if we're, if we're base green and splashing blue, it's harder to play. But the green cards have just been so good, and it's hard to take, like, Daring Thunder Thief, which I think is fine. Same with the fording over an armadillo, which also gives us fixing. So, so Omen Path Journey is kind of interesting, but I don't really think something you can pull off in limited. Um, yeah, I mean, Congregation Griff is okay. I mean, more than okay if you're in green-white. I don't think Reach for the Sky is great. I could take it just to cut like the last playable mono green card out of this pack. But maybe I'll take the Griff and speculate on it a little here. Maybe we don't end up playing blue. I mean, I hope that's not what happens. If we end up with enough fixing, we could swing Splashing Bonnie since you can play her whenever, but, you know, we'll see. So, you know, Silver Deputy is an example of fixing. I mean, it's not great. It's a little clunky at the job, but it does do it. Um, this pack has some strong stuff in it for late, though. It's got a Rictus Robber, most notably, which I think is really good. Um, kind of think you need to take Snakeskin Veil, though. It's just such a good trick. Um, it's performed pretty well in this format so far. Reckless Lackey is pretty good to still be here, too. All right. So could take a blue card, but I think we're, again, just going to take a, a green card, you know, because it's a playable one. Um, and it's not like this blue card's that much better. I do like the Link Breaker. 
Another Bristle Pack Sentry. I think that's what we take. Green's super duper open. Yeah, here's a throw from the saddle. I think we just take it. Um, you know, if green's crazy open, it wouldn't be that hard to play, you know, just a few blue cards. And so far, it seems pretty open. Okay. So, decent blue card. And then a couple of solid red cards. And then a, a desert. I'm kind of thinking I might just take the desert. I do like the Strix okay, though. And maybe I should, maybe I should actually take some blue cards, huh? If I want to play Bonnie Pal. All right, Naturalist helps us splash. Yeah, now we'll take a Thunder Thief. Both of my drafts I've recorded so far, blue has been, or green rather, has been crazy open. Oh, hello. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was thinking this was the, I was like, wait, why is it down here? I was thinking it was the rare that has similar art, but it's a brush wag. It's not. Um, this is not playable in limited. This is tough to play in limited, so we didn't do too well on our... Uh, our, our, our slots there. Um, not a great pack for us overall. I mean, I think Prairie Dog might be the best card in this pack. Scale Storm uh, Summoner's pretty good. We probably just are on the Possum. I mean, it's not as exciting as I thought, but it is probably what we take here. Um, yeah. Okay, well, things are getting interesting now, because now we have a Fortune Loyal Steed. We already have the signpost uncommon for doing um, stuff with uh, mounts. So that's intriguing. And we've already got a few mounts. Does mean playing Bonnie Paul might be off the table, but blue just hasn't been that open. You know, we've seen some decent blue cards, but nothing crazy. Um, I'm probably going to take Fortune. And maybe we shift into green-white. We can try to find some fixing to play Bonnie Powell. I mean, right now, it doesn't seem super likely. We already have some, but we don't have a lot. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's just... The one blue card in this pack is fine, but it's not uh, not what I'm looking for. Neither is Rest in Peace. Um, Geyser Drake's okay, but again, it's not really a blue card that makes me really want to try to play blue. I think we're looking at... I mean, there's lots of good green cards in this pack, which has been something I've said a lot. We've got Raucous Entertainer and Burrow Fiend and Ankle Biter and Giant Beaver. These are all pretty good green cards. Um, may just go with the mount, since we've got some mount stuff going on. I do like the Entertainer, but yeah, we'll just go with the mount that's a two-drop over the mount that's a four-drop. All right, so here's a Lassoed by the Law, a card... That starts to pull us a little bit into um, white, but there's also a fractured identity. Hmm. So we could be green, white, splash, blue, which th wouldn't be a stretch if we do that already. So I think we take fractured identity. It's too good not to take. Lasso by the Law is good already, right? This is like twice as good because <laughs> it gives you a copy of the thing you exile. It costs one more mana. It's a little trickier to cast, but it's too good to pass up, I think. Um whether we're green, blue, or blue, white, or green, white, those are our real options, uh, we'll be able to play Fractured Identity. So here's a Mystical Tether. Pulls us a little more into green, white. We do also have a Hard Bristle Bandit, though, which helps us with our mana issues on top of everything else. So I think it's where I'm leaning. Path to Exile. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, it's uh, not as good in Limited as it is in Constructed. Like, you can't really cast it till the later stages of the game, but pay one, exile your best creature is still pretty nuts. So we'll take a path to exile here. Another Burrow Fiend. Probably just the pick. Yeah. So be nice if one of those we saw a, a desert we could use for fixing but uh it's when we took fortune it'd be nice if it wheeled i guess um sterling supplier is fine it seems like white is more likely now than than blue is unfortunately yeah we continue to see pretty good white stuff i do like wrangler of the damned but like there's a lot of good white cards in this pack still and and peerless rope master is all we got for blue um, Airings is fine. Requisition Raid is a pretty high ceiling. 
Lullaby's okay too, but I think we probably just take another two drop. Bovine Intervention's real bad. I think we probably want Snakeskin Veil over Wingsmith. Man, look at that. Um, yep, Entertainer now. And now a holy cow. Yeah, Green White is definitely the the lane we're supposed to be in, even though it's a little sad when we first picked Bonnie Pal. Like, blue just isn't there. Oh, now we get a Dust Animus. Well, if I wasn't sure already, now I am. Um, we'll leave her here for now. It'd be great if we could find a way to play her. It just doesn't seem super likely. We will be splashing blue, but two blue pips is way more than one, you know. But yeah, we take Dust Animus here. Okay, Journey to Nowhere is great. Probably what I'm supposed to take. I do like Lone Shark. Seeing more of those or some Slick Shot Lock Pickers earlier would have been nice. Because uh, they are, like, really quality cards in blue. But yeah, we'll take Journey. It's great removal. So we do have a lot of mounts for Steer Clear. If you don't have red mana, you shouldn't really play High Noon. And even then, it's not like it's anywhere close to a really good card in your deck. Tumbleweed Rising doesn't look terrible in our deck, but maybe I'm just supposed to take an Ankle Biter. I mean, I think our curve is looking pretty good, so it's not like we're desperate for more low drops. And that's what both of these basically are. Um, this land doesn't help us. For it also got a lot of removal, um, really. So maybe I'm just supposed to take the nice one drop that can trade for anything. Over Tumbleweed Rising. Yeah, probably. Okay, another land that doesn't really help us. Take an Outlaw Medic. Another Outlaw Medic, or do I want an Omenport Vigilante more? Probably the Vigilante. We're not, you know, this thing's fine, but it's not nearly as good if you're not interested in, like, sacrificing, or I guess we have a few ways we might augment it, but I think we're probably just supposed to take the Vigilante here. We do have a lot of two drops, that's for sure. Another land that doesn't help us. Um, Conduit Pylons helps us some, though. I'm probably going to take it. Over a wanted griffin. We already have one, and I don't know that it's going to make the cut anyway. So, yeah, we'll take the pylon. Take up the shield is a nice trick. Um, we do already have two snakeskin veils, but I'd probably cut one for one take up the shield. Seems like green and white are finally being um, snatched up. All right. Um... The ceiling on Trash the Town is just so high, and the Bighorn and these other things, I mean, they're fine, but I think I'm probably supposed to take Trash the Town here. Take a Naturalist. And a Townsfolk. I kind of doubt you make the cut. There's a few things that I kind of doubt make the cut, but... I don't hate the Locomotive, but I don't really think we need it in this deck. Could have had all the reach for the skies we wanted. So, yeah. I'll look at our fixing. I mean, we do have a pylon now. We did get one land that helps us. And then we have a couple... We have a couple cards that make treasure sometimes. You don't actually get the option to make treasure if you hit a land with this, which is kind of a bummer. I wish it was an option. It would probably be too good, I guess. The treasure is supposed to be more of a consolation prize than an upgrade. And it probably would be too good if it was an upgrade some of the time. So, we're definitely splashing blue. And in terms of fixing, we've got a Conduit Pylons, a Spinewoods Armadillo. Sort of Patient Naturalist, but not really. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it, I think. Well, we've got the two Bandits, but they're so fragile. Like, you can count on them as, like, helping your mana, but you can't really count on them as a source of fixing. So, sadly, I think we have to toss out our pack one pick one. The good news is, I think we end up with a pretty strong deck even without it because of how things, you know, how open green and white were. Like, we got some pretty crazy green and white cards late in packs. So, I'll be okay. We're only going to run one island. 
And we probably want more forests. Um, we probably don't, we probably have more removal than we need. So there's some removal that needs to be trimmed out. I do think we switch out, we take out one veil for one take up the shield. The question is whether we run um, trash the town. Um, yeah, vengeful townsfolk, not really a deck where we'll make that good of use of it. Um, wanted griffins, okay. I mean, we have these two like decent but unexciting flyers that could be on the chopping block. We do have a lot of creatures for Burrow Fiend, which might end up being pretty nice. Yeah, the Medic's not great in our deck. I mean, it's fine, but we have so many two drops already. Um, how good are we at Bristle Pack Sentry Ing? I don't think we're as good at it as the last deck I played a couple of them in, which is also up on the channel, I think. Yeah, we're not that good at it. They are good at saddling things, which, you know, it matters, but... They're probably just going to be two mana, three, three defenders a lot. I mean, you can also have four power on something else, right? But we don't have that much of it either. We have a lot of like threes and stuff. So yeah, this is probably not a bristle pack sentry deck. I think it's, you know, if you want to see a deck where it works out, the deck I had yesterday was pretty good with it. Or yesterday, on Tuesday's draft video, was pretty good with it. Um, but this one, it doesn't look like it's going to gonna hold up. And I think Outlaw Medic's probably a similar thing where we don't have the synergy to really feel like we're getting there with it. So I'd probably cut it too. Naturalists. Um, we're not doing that much graveyard stuff. We do have our Burrow Fiends, but without graveyard stuff, it's probably not a... If, if, again, like I said earlier, if this lets you always choose to get a treasure, if you want the treasure, uh, I'd play it, but it doesn't. Um, you have to get a... You, you either... If you don't mill a land, you get a treasure, or you get a land back. And um, we're not doing other graveyard stuff, apart from the Burrow Fiends, but the Burrow Fiends can fuel themselves, and it's not... We don't have to go out of our way to make it work either, so they probably get the axe. Um, do I want Trash the Town, or do I just want to stick to two cheaper tricks that are better against removal? You know, this one has the higher ceiling, of course, but... It might be on the chopping block. I mean, you only want so many tricks anyway, right? Like, how many slots are we going to take up with um, uh, tricks? And, you know, two-ish is usually about right. Is this mostly just a two-mana two-two in this deck? How are we committing crimes? Path to Exile, Steer Clear. How many mounts do we have? I think we have a lot, you know, seven. Yeah, that's a pretty good number probably enough for steer clear to i mean it's going to do four often enough that i think we want it yeah i think we can probably cut trash the town more congregation griffs would have been pretty nice in this deck that's for sure yeah we're not that good at committing crimes i mean there is threat of activation and all that but I think all our other two drops are better, and we have we have plenty of them. I'm probably going to cut either a griffin or a supplier, and then one more two drop to get us there. I don't think I want to try to get away with 16 lands, and that's partly because I'm splashing. So it has less to do with the number of lands than it does with the number of sources, colored sources of mana. Um, so yeah, I think we got to run 17. Yeah, so which of these do I like less? I think I like Supplier a little more than Wanted Griffin. And uh, yeah, then we'll cut a Vigilante. We have like three ways or so to commit crimes. So I think our other twos, which have like, you know, Synergy because they're mounts or whatever, probably are a little bit better for us. All right. Looks like a pretty solid deck to me. It is sad we first picked a Bonnie Paul. Then we also splashed blue, but we're not going to play her. <laughs> Stupid two blue mana symbols. If only she had one, that would be, that'd be great. Okay. Looks like a pretty good hand. I mean, two drop and three drop and both of our main colors of mana. 
Now some removal in the mix. I wonder whether it's going to be better to play... It's probably better to play the Erynx, because it'll be able to attack on turn 3 if I play either of these. Well, we have a lot of mounts in our deck, so that's unfortunate for our opponent. Fortune, unfortunately, only works when it's the one that gets saddled. It would be pretty sweet if it worked both ways. But alas. Okay, do I want to play the pylons? Get a little card selection going here? I probably do. Because if I have a land on top, I'm going to stick it in the graveyard for sure. Um, It's not a land, but I also don't really need it. I mean, it's a creature, but... <clears throat> I have more than enough mana. I mean, it's better than a land, that's true, but I'd rather get closer to something that's not a land, I think. So there's no actual reason for us to saddle here, so uh, we won't. And then we'll play Fortune. Dig even deeper. All right, yeah. Put Dust Animus on top. End our turn. Opponent has mana problems, which is not a good place to be when your opponent is curving out against you. Okay. So you can play a huge Dust Animus next turn. Alright, so I think we just play... Do I just play Ankle Biter and Crew the Erynx? Probably. And then Suspend, or... Well, it's not Suspending, but you know what I mean. Uh, do the Dust Animus thing. So yeah, let's play this. And then, yeah, we want to give this first strike. This has non-mount, right? Just double-checking. Oh, it does need two power. Read your cards, kids. Um... Well... Yeah. <laughs> I would have played the Burrow Fiend. If I was thinking. I mean... It's probably what we're supposed to do anyway. I mean, it's not as good. Well, I do just have Steer Clear. Eh, we'll play the Burrow Fiend. We can crew both of them, so... Crew, saddle, whatever. So I might as well, because I get Scry again if I do. And another scry. Bottom. I mean, there's not really any reason for us to use steer clear. I mean, I guess if they didn't block, I would. Or uh, if they did block, maybe. No, there's no reason to use it. So this comes back untapped, and so does our ankle biter untapped. So we get a scry again. <laughs> it's pretty nuts that they attached, like, Card selection to all these random things. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even do the thing I was going to do, which really would have made them scoop, but it was still pretty good, I guess. Still worked out pretty well. But yeah, they had serious mana problems, and we were just, like, playing big old mounts. And the only card they had in play couldn't interact with our mounts. <laughs> they could have tapped one of our other creatures to keep us from... Mounting, saddling, but uh, then their creatures tapped, so it kind of defeats the purpose. Because you cannot um, saddle at instant speed, unlike crewing. We don't have an early drop, but I still think we have to keep this. Um, maybe we'll kill something with steer clear on like turn two before playing out other stuff. I could use this to grab our black mana, I guess. There's a pretty good chance we draw a one or a two drop just because we have so many of them. We do not, though. Um, it might just be worth cycling this away. We don't have to make the decision yet, but it really might be because we're not playing it for a while anyway. Making sure we have... It's blue mana that we want, actually. Making sure we have our blue mana is relevant. I mean, I do already have a ton of lands. Why well, they whiffed? Yeah, I think we probably do it. Um, hmm. Might just be better to get the pylons. It probably is. 
card selection and everything, and, you know, we don't need... Yeah, let's just get the pylons. Makes it less likely we draw yet another land in a row, you know? <laughs> okay, well, there's Fractured Identity. Makes me wish a little bit more that I had, um... Grabbed a straight-up island, because... Then it would be, I'd be able to cast it in the near nearer future. Man, I need something that I can play sooner than Sterling Supplier, I feel like. Maybe. I mean... I guess by the time I draw it, I'll be able to play it. So... Yeah. I mean, I'd like to add more to the board, but it's not like these aren't good things. And rebuying this could even be pretty good, although my uh, steed will lose its counter every time. But, you know. Yeah, we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it. Definitely not going to deliver a beatdown like we did in our last game. Okay, luckily... Well, I say luckily, but I can't really kill it. Unless it blocks. Because it'll get more toughness when they uh, buff it. Let's see. Yeah, I guess I'm going to play Forest. Then we'll attack. Um, I mean, if they do block, then we have some nice stuff we can do. But yeah, I was going to say, there's... There's basically no way they block, so we'll just pass our turn here. Yeah, next turn we play Sterling Supplier. Probably going to copy their Congregation Griff when the time comes. Returning Frontier Seeker is pretty sweet here for them. If they don't buff this, which I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, but if they didn't, I would obviously use Steer Clear to kill it. They do have one green up, which means they could have their own Snakeskin Veil, of course, but... Huh. I think we go for it. I mean, they might have the Veil, but we trade card for card. It's not like a the end of the world if they do, and then we're going to Fractured Identity it later, so. So let's see if they have Snakeskin Veil. Yeah, they do. Their deck is similar to ours, I think it's safe to say. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to take a hit here. Okay. Next turn we can Fractured Identity, but for now, we're just going to Sterling Supplier... Which is kind of a funny way to do this. But it works. <laughs> bottom and bottom. So yeah, next turn we can Fractured Identity... Get rid of that Congregation Griff and get our own Congregation Griff. Although, if they're not completely tapped out, I would be a little shy about doing it, I suppose. Doesn't it only become... I mean, it's just going to gain them life, right? Oh, no. It gets four power. I, oh, yeah. It counts its... It has a counter, and then... Uh, yeah, it counts itself. So, we know Fractured Identity is going to work. That's the good news. So, do we just attack with both, or is it better to buff? I mean, I think... I think we just attack with both here. Yeah. And then Fractured Identity on Congregation Griff. I could 
have done that first, I guess. But, and then I could have done... Eh, no, because it's a token. Would have been nice to have Snakeskin Veil mana up after I did it. But even if I don't, it's a two for one. Like, even if they kill this R1-4 now, it's a two for one. So, my feelings aren't too hurt about it. Yeah, they can make a 1-1 one, one here, I guess. For free, sort of. Yeah. That's what they'll do. More lands is not awesome. That's why this card selection is a little enticing, I think. Yeah, and I can put a counter here. That actually seems pretty good. Although, they can kill Fortune now, can't they? Yeah. I do have Snakeskin Veil, which might break it up, depending on how they chose to block. But if they put the Bighorn... I mean, if they just put the Bighorn in front of it, that would be great. But it seems unlikely. Um, I do think I do think we do it. So, we're going to saddle up here. If nothing else, this comes back and puts a counter here, which is still pretty good. We really want them to block... I mean, if they don't block at all, that obviously works for us. They may have mass pump. You know, there's a, an overrun effect in this format, which would kind of suck. Okay, so yeah, I think we use Snakeskin Veil here to keep Fortune alive and kill both of those. He's not going to keep the counter forever, which is kind of a bummer, but, you know, that's okay. Put a counter here. Okay, got some action coming, and these are things that can um, saddle. I don't really think we want Hard Bristle Bandit. I'll take the Entertainer, though. It's going to make all our plays. I mean, I can use it to put counters on the things after they come back from a fortune turn, I guess. It's not exactly a big deal, but it's a thing. I do feel, you know, we're in kind of a good spot, thanks to our uh, fractured identity, but we're in kind of an awkward one, too. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a problem. Kind of means we can't do anything. Big ol' uh, reach creature he is. <laughs> Makes me a little more glad that I bottomed the other one. They're pretty good early, but they're not that great late. They have blue now. Maybe they have their own fractured identity. May as well put a counter on this. Yeah, that's a little bit annoying. I think if I were them, would I attack with Cac Tarantula? Probably. You can't tap that. You can tap the Hard Bristle Bandit, but you can't tap the mounts. 
Tapping Hard Bristle Bandit does mean I basically can't block Cac Tarantula, though. So, yeah, I was going to say, it's probably worth doing. It also means I can attack back, though, and gain, like, significant life. Ow. Really, I haven't gotten to play with that card yet. It's a sweet one, though. Yeah, they're definitely, I mean, in a better spot than we are. Yeah, now he's a 4-5. Look at that. Good news is, Path to Exile is pretty good in this situation. Where in the late game, it's when you want to draw it, pretty much. Um, Do I want to attack with this as a 4-7? I kind of don't think so, sadly. Gaining life sounds nice and all, but I think we I think we're in kind of defensive mode here. We're gonna have to kill Cac Tarantula. There's something to be said for doing it now. I mean it's already a two for one, a three for one really, because they get a land too. Um But if I wait, there's a chance they draw another uh snakeskin veil. I mean or to have the mana up for it. I mean, I think we still just hang back here. Unfortunately. Another desert is bad news. This can only get basics at least, so this isn't going to get to five power, at which point it's like a pretty serious concern. Yeah, tap our flyer. Big flyer. Okay. So we may end up having to path Outcaster Greenblade if there's a trick here. Um, definitely blocking. So if I use a trick here, there's a chance that they then have, um... Um... Their own... Effect. Like, if I use Path here... Yeah, if I decide to use Path on Cac Tarantula, they could use a trick on Outcaster Greenblade. I think we just take it. Yeah. Don't love it, but... Now do I Path Cac Tarantula? Probably. Kind of wish I'd done it before now, but... Maybe, maybe they did have something. I was maybe a little too worried. But if we get rid of Cac Tarantula, like... We can block the rest of their board. Kind of feels like they have something, though, huh? Yeah. Okay. So... The big reason to do this is that they get they get to draw twice off of Cac Tarantula's ability, which is kind of gross. Um, so, okay, ooh, that means I can gain a lot of life. I think I'm supposed to. I mean, the bad news is they can then tap down Stitcher Supplier. Sterling Supplier, rather. Um, is it better to attack with Fortune? It probably is. Buff him and attack with him. Because then I get another Sterling Supplier trigger. Yeah, that's probably better overall. 
Okay, so let's use... Let's do the Aloe Alchemist thing. But we want to plot it. <laughs> Made that mistake before. Buff Fortune. Also, the card selection's no small thing. I mean, they can kill Fortune, and I think there's a decent chance they do, but... But it's not like they'd lose nothing, you know. And then I'd bring this back, put a counter here. I can use Rockus Entertainer to put another counter somewhere. Then we'll path the Cac Tarantula for real. Seems pretty good overall. The reason I didn't want to attack with this is it's the only thing that's big enough um, to block, like, Outcaster Green Blade. Guess they're trying to decide if they just want to take five. I wonder whether they have the overrun. If they do, I think we probably lose this game ultimately. Yeah, they're just taking it, which really makes me think they have the overrun, which is more than a little bit scary. <laughs> I think we put the counter here. Love me some lifelink. And I like more creatures are good, too. So, yeah, if we tap this, it'll put a counter on both of them. It does mean one less blocker for the overrun, but we're dead if they overrun anyway, you know. So, might as well just do it. Um, and then we will path Cac Tarantula. Give them another card. Yeah, I should have used that for the mana. It doesn't really matter since my hand's empty, but... It is free mana. Don't have an overrun effect. Ooh. Well, just removal for our token is pretty bad too. All their flyers, yeah, we're just we're just dead now. Cause six flying damage, yeah. Well they just had too many too many things, you know. They were able to go really wide on us and we were never really able to even after we, you know, used our uh two for one spell, the steal your creature, exile your creature and get a copy of it, even after we did that. <laughs> it wasn't really enough. Ooh. I mean, I think we keep it. It's a little sketchy that we have to hope we draw. We either stick Hard Bristle Bandit or we draw white, but one of those is likely to happen, right? <laughs> right? I think so, yeah. Kind of funny that we've drawn that on turn two a couple times now. I probably play Fortune first because the card selection will guarantee our chances of, uh, you know. Well, okay, we hit white anyway, so maybe now I go a different route. I think we do, probably. Maybe. Um, Fortune plus Ankle Biter is pretty good, though. Might just be better than the Griff. Because it's not like I'm going to be able to crew Saddle the Griff super soon. I mean, Throw from the Saddle will help us. But yeah, I, th I think we still go... Let's go with Fortune. Scry 2. We're a mana short on Sterling Supplier. You know, it does work nicely with Fortune, as we saw a minute ago, but... I don't know that I love drawing it. I guess we're not a mana short, actually. If Hard Bristle Bandit's still around. And we do have a... Yeah, okay, okay. I think we want to draw the land first. But I think we... Other than that, we leave it the same. And then we'll also play Ankle Biter. Sheriff of Safe Passage. Okay. 
Well, it's not going to be that scary in the immediate future. Um... Okay. Well... I think we go ahead and saddle. And attack. Looks pretty good to me. Although maybe I want to draw the alchemist. No, the supplier can crew or <laughs> saddle our congregation griff right away. Yeah. We're just going to leave it as is. Play our congregation griff. And then I think we just leave up, take up the shield. Um, yeah. I could try to kill Sterling Keykeeper, but it doesn't seem particularly worthwhile right now. I guess if they play, like, uh, Prickly Pear and then Sheriff of Safe Passage, that could be kind of gross. All right, so I guess you kill... You kill my bandit? You do. That, that's sad. Do I want to save my bandit? Because if I don't have my bandit... Um... I can't play Sterling Supplier this turn. Yeah, I think we go ahead and save it. Okay. So, let's play Sterling Supplier. Put a counter here. Then we're going to saddle this with that. And we're going to saddle this with that. They do have the ability to, like, play a whole bunch of stuff, but at the same time... Throw from the saddle's pretty likely to be able to deal with whatever they do. All right, we will bottom a land. I mean, they, they're going to have a big turn at some point. They have two cards here. Uh, but, like... Yeah, so then they play this, then they play that. Sure. None of that concerns me a whole lot. All right, so let's Aloe Alchemist. Plotted. And we want to target... Congregation Griff. This does have reach, worth remembering. So I think we use Throw from the Saddle to kill the reach creature. I'm trying to decide how many things are there that could just kill Congregation Griff here. Not very many. Um, but, yeah, it would get to hold on to the counter, too, though. Yeah, that's hard to say no to. If I wanted to be really cautious, I could use Ankle Biter to kill Longhorn Sharpshooter. But. I mean, this is a swingier play, I guess. I guess if they have some kind of response, I'm in some serious trouble. Sort of looks like they do. Okay, well, it's not the worst response, at least. Um, all right, so we're going to, yeah, we're just going to saddle, because this can't really attack now anyway. 
they can block and whatnot, but I gain a bunch of life and trample damage still happens. I guess they gain life too, but I think it's still worth doing. Yeah. We go up to 10. And we end our turn. We're at 38. That feels pretty good. Oh, they have the removal. Well, that's no fun. Congregation Griff going down cost us our last game. I think it did enough this game that we might be still be okay, but we will have to see. All right, Path to Exile on Longhorn Sharpshooter sounds pretty good. So the only thing about that is that they can tap my Sterling Supplier every turn with their Sterling Key Keeper, but I guess that's fine. I kind of don't need to worry about Path to Exile yet, though, if that's the case. I may as well attack first, because if they decide not to, I at least get in for three. Yeah. Two attackers. All right. Kind of, kind of thought that might happen. So, I think maybe we just hold on to path now. Yeah, I think that makes sense. We could take two a turn for a while, so not really any sense in uh giving everything trample might be nice in the future so let's go to combat again interesting all right so i think we try to use path now i mean it gets us in for three damage and gets rid of what's probably their best creature anyway. Oh yeah, I should have done, done it that way. Doesn't make a difference here, but I do keep screwing up Hard Bristle Bandit. So, I mean, dropping them to seven and then having Drover Grizzly in play would be pretty nice. Oh, they've got a Mystical Tether. So they're going to kill our supplier, I would imagine, yeah. So they're not going to go to seven. We do still get rid of their creature. Let's hope we don't fix their mana. That is something that can happen. Like, if they're holding onto the one black card in their deck and they need a swamp. Yeah, that's not what happened, luckily. Luckily, their draws also don't seem to be going super well. So that's good. Um, so now they're going to start tapping our Drover Grizzly. I would imagine, anyway. Oh, it's a mount. They can't. Ha <laughs> ha! That's right. Okay, so yeah, we attack with Drover Grizzly. Does the Sheriff just trade for it? I hope so. They might have to take up the shield, though, based on how they just looked at their hand. Brutal. Yeah, I think they have it. Not as bad as take up the shield because they don't gain a bunch of life, but yeah, it's not great either. Not great either. So I need fortune to survive in order to, um, you know, have... Uh, 
the scry happen. So, it's kind of a problem. If I got to scry either way, I'd probably give fortune up at this point just to... Um, do it. Fractured identity would be pretty good right now, huh? <laughs> I'm glad we have so much life, but uh, we're very lucky our opponent is also just drawing lands. Okay. You're going to be... Decent chance you're big enough. Let's go to combat, see if they tap anything. I need another creature in the graveyard, or Stubborn Burrow Fiend isn't really worth attacking with. Well, now it can at least set up set up our other stubborn burrow fiend, which is kind of nice. Probably mill our fractured identity while we're at it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's something we can safely do until um, until we feel like uh, until we know it's at least got four power. In the meantime, we may as well just keep trying to go wide on them. I mean, we're still at 24 after all. <laughs> so, you know. We've got time to spare. Attacking with both is kind of intriguing. Yeah. I mean, what are the chances we don't hit enough stuff for them to be huge? You know what I mean? So, I think that's what we're going to do here. We can even afford a backswing. Like, we don't need to worry that much about it. So let's go ahead and saddle. All right. So now they're both going to be big enough. Hitting a flyer might have been nice, but, you know... Um I guess Fortune's more useful to have untapped, especially because Key Keeper can't tap it. You can't tap them! <laughs> They're mounts! Yeah, you can tap that, though. Does seem a little weird that they're mounts compared to most of the creatures in this set, but, you know. Alright, they've got an answer for one, and they probably just trade their sheriff for the other. Or they go to six. Surprises me a little bit. Why hold on to the sheriff? Because you want to hit me for four. I suppose that's a reason. Okay. Um, they don't have a good block for fortune anymore, which probably means I should do that whole thing. Because at least they have to give something up. So, and I get to scry if he survives. And Ankle Biter comes back untapped even if he doesn't survive. So, um, yeah. Let's do this. Up to seven all of a sudden. Um, and then we'll do this. Actually, we can attack with, try to attack with the Alchemist. They're going to tap it, probably, I guess. It 
Yeah. They have to block the Burrow Fiend, so they may not even be able to kill Fortune. Nice. So we're going to get to Scry. Dust Animus looks good. I don't really need an island. I mean, I guess Fractured Identity would be kind of awkward at this point. Well, I have Hard Bristle Bandit, so... And then we'll play another mount. Four, five, six, seven. I don't need to play another land for this to come into play as a huge creature with lifelink. Looking pretty good here. All that life, you know, for a while it wasn't looking good, but we had so much life to work with that even though it took us like six turns or more, we had the time we needed to try to figure things out. Yeah, this is a potentially scary attack, but they're at four... Yeah, <laughs> if you only get one attack out of it, that's kind of sad. I feel kind of bad. But I think that might be the right thing. This is what's going to start getting tapped by uh, Sterling Keykeeper, incidentally. So how big do you get? You are a 4-5 when I swing. So let's do this. And... I don't really want to tap Ankle Biter. It's just such a good blocker right now that I think I'd rather tap Aloe Alchemist for this. I could return it to my hand, which might actually be worth doing. We'll decide later, I guess. Because if we return it to our hand... Um... Oh, I have to decide now, assuming it resolves anyway. Um... No, when it attacks, I decide. Would be nice if it worked now, because then I could give this trample. You know, I think it actually is worth returning, especially because it's tapped anyway. So, we're going to do it. So they've got to block both of them. They do have a, you know, these two can just bounce off of each other. But that makes it a lot harder for them to kill Stubborn Burrow Fiend. So I'm kind of okay with it. Yeah, so we'll kill the Sheriff, theoretically. Alright, then we play Dust Animus. And hold on to Aloe Alchemist, because it's likely to be what we need to give us lethal. Those Burrow Fiends, man. They were kind of the MVP in that particular game. Took a while since we got out to like a huge lead, but then fell way behind and then made a comeback of sorts. I guess it's not really a comeback when you have a thousand life, but it felt pretty bad for us for a while there. <laughs>
okay. You know, we don't have much in the way of threats, but we have all three colors of mana. A couple of creatures to play early. It's not too bad. Yeah, that might be a problem as we continue to not draw something real. <laughs> um, I guess Hard Bristle Bandit's going to swing. Trading Ankle Biter for Mobile Homestead doesn't seem too bad to me. It will feel... Ugh. How many Congregation Griffs are we going to see today? Alright, Fortune's a good draw, that's for sure. Do I send in the ankle biter here? Eh, probably not. No, thank you. Yes, please. Might have to use snakeskin veil plus throw. Well, throw from the saddle can just well, on ankle biter can kill anything. So, yeah. Looking like they're going to attack us here. I guess they just want this trigger, huh? Oh. Why do it that way? Does that make some sort of difference? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to take two. Okay. So, I think we want to kill Congregation Griff. I don't want to burn Snakeskin Veil to do it, so we're just going to have Ankle Biter do it. The awkward thing about that... Eh, I, I, yeah, I'd like for this to come back into play untapped, but it's not the end of the world that it doesn't. Oh, wait. May as well... You know, this early in the game, we could actually bluff... A little bit. Although, I guess if I'm doing that, we can't really bluff, huh? Because it'll be unable to tap for mana. Bottom that. Sterling Supplier is going to be a pretty good draw, I think. The question here is whether I'm willing to block with fortune, and I think the answer is probably no. Doesn't really seem worth the risk. Hey, we just had a good time with that guy. Alright, so we're going to start doing the sterling supplier thing, I guess. Put the counter here. I think we just put the counter right back on Fortune. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, we do already have one trick, but take up. Yeah, I mean, I think we, I think we just stick with things as is here. Fortune's pretty nuts. I think uh, we can safe safely say, <laughs> especially when you have like things to take advantage of. Yeah, having to burn that to draw is rough. Oh my god, and they hit 
four lands, three lands and a congregation griff. It's kind of less than ideal. I guess maybe I want to take up the shield on top now that I think about it, because take up the shield would make Fortune a much better attacker here. Fortune will still be able to attack here, but, you know, it would have been better. I think we probably actually attack with Sterling Supplier here, too, rather than uh, Blink it again. Last time we couldn't attack with it, this time we can, so, you know. So, yeah. I'm going to do this. I guess they can double block, but am I kind of okay with that? Maybe I'm not. Yeah, it's kind of not a necessary risk when I can just attack with my flyer. And I have take up the shield on top of my library. So they're going to play their own Griff, who... He only counts mounts. That's kind of a bummer. Most of the effects in this set say vehicles, too. Seems kind of dumb that they didn't do that with Congregation Griff. Kind of dumb. Okay. So... Yeah, we'll do this. Oh, whoops. This is what I'm trying to do. So I think we use take up the shield because... Um, it, well, they're both good against removal, aren't they? Hmm. Already got lifelink here, too. So... I actually think we use snakeskin veil. Alright. That worked out pretty nicely for us, as our opponent said. <laughs> Yeah. Getting our board online like that and then having two tricks to back it all up makes it pretty hard for our opponent to win. Not playing Bonnie Paula has been sad, but her deck does seem pretty strong. We just ended up in what I think were just the two most open colors by a wide margin. Makes up for not playing a crazy bomb. I mean, it's not like we don't still have really good cards in our deck. It's not an amazing hand, but I do think it's a keep. I mean, we don't generally want St Sterling Supplier in our opening hand, for example. And I don't love a hand where it feels like I might have to just cast Aloe Alchemist, but, you know. It's okay if we do, I guess. Yeah, they're... They are curving out over there. Hmm. Now I can just use Steer Clear on one of these. Probably what I do, rather than play the Alchemist. Or plot the Alchemist, for that matter. Yeah. So if they have a mount here, it's not great for us. Because they can play a five-mana mount right now. I'm hoping they just attack us with this thing. We'll try to kill it. There's a chance they have a trick, of course. They do not. They do play a mount, but it's one that, uh, <laughs> you know. They didn't need all that mana for anyway. Yeah, that's not great. Probably have to play Aloe Alchemist. Just try to trade here. Uh, 
Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. Um, more unfortunately, they can just... Uh, they can just uh, saddle this, and then it can attack us. We've seen a lot of other mount decks, haven't we? I'm thinking we hold on to Spinewood Armadillo. I mean, grabbing our blue mana would be kind of nice, I guess, but... Yeah, you can just attack with both, really. Um... Yeah. I think we just take the hit here. Down to nine we go. Do I need the life? I'm just not that far from being able to cast it. I, so I just can't bring myself to do it. Well, that's interesting. Probably still supposed to do this, though. Not looking awesome, though. We're the ones who got the, the mount beat down this time. <laughs> Instead of delivering it. If we're allowed to get to our next turn with a decent amount of life, we have a good chance, but that might not happen. Yet another congregation grift, you say? <laughs> Between us and our opponents, I think that's like, what, the sixth Congregation Griff? Alright, they didn't hit any creatures, which is nice for us. Is a double block what I'm supposed to do here? I think it probably is. Whichever one survives, I can still kill Congregation Griff with Throw from the Saddle, so... Ooh, Dust Animus, hello. Okay. Well, that means we go throw from the saddle, target a creature I control. I think we're still supposed to kill the flyer. The only thing that's interesting is this is going to be bigger at some point, but the griff is the more immediate threat. We're going to plot that. And then we're going to pass our turn. We can't really afford to attack, obviously. We can blink removal, so... You know, there, there would be a chance for them to do lethal here if they milled things just right. But it's a lot less likely since I can blink a removal spell. That's pretty gross, though. If I can play Dust Animus and Spinewood's Armadillo this next turn, I'll feel pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they can just attack with both of these, more or less. I can use Snakeskin Veil, potentially, to solve our problem. Well, somewhat, anyway. And that's probably what I'll do. Now that we're in top deck mode, it does get kind of worse. I mean, our opponent still might draw removal eventually, but it's obviously less likely. Yeah, they're at 20. It's sort of like our last game. Well, except we're not ahead of them in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I think I'm probably supposed to use the Veil here to win this combat. Drawing a land is like our best draw here, because we go Dust Animus, then play a 7-7 that's bigger than anything they have. Not a land, and, well, that's awkward. I probably was supposed to grab blue now, huh? That's probably what's supposed to happen. Um, I'm thinking that's, that's the way to do it. 
It would be great to have both of these, of course, but... Grabbing our island is probably better. It's tempting to be greedy, but we're too far behind to be that greedy. <laughs> yeah, I think we just take the six. We're going to gain back three, so... And then more than that, obviously. Although, if they have removal for dust animus... Does make our lives harder, though not impossible. Oh, 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 it does five exactly here. So we're dead. How sad. How very sad. <laughs> uh, should I have double blocked the 6-6? Six, six? I guess the answer is probably yeah. I mean, in hindsight's twenty twenty, but... If I double block the 6-6, six, six, I gain a bunch of life, and then they're going to end up killing both my creatures, because they would have used Crackle to kill the other one. But then I have a Fractured Identity to take down their best creature. I mean, we probably still lose, I guess. Still wouldn't have gone super great for us, but... All right, this looks pretty good. We don't have white, exactly, but uh, we sort of do. You think we're up against another mount deck? <laughs> it's a good chance. There's a good chance, I think. I think we play Pylons and then probably Entertainer next turn, since then the Entertainer can start sort of giving our cards kicker. Hard to say no to it. It is not awesome early, but it's going to come in handy late, so... We won't be using it for a while, but I can't put Path to Exile on the bottom. Question's going to be whether it's better to just play Dust Animus, um... Or plot dust animus for now? Probably not. I think adding something to the board now is probably a little bit better. Is it better to hit them for two here than it is to make my Burrow Fiend a 3-3? Three, three? Um, given that there's like a pretty good chance they have removal, I think trying to just make it a 3-3 three, three is probably better than getting in for two. Let's go to combat and see if anything happens. I don't think it will. Oh, no, no. And then we'll play Burrow Fiend. See what they do. Might get countered. I guess it getting countered is a bad is bad news for us, given what I chose to do. Okay, well. That's sort of acceptable, I guess. The outcome is pretty much the same. Yeah, they've kept us from really being able to do anything. Cost me three right now to uh, do this, so I think I'm probably just supposed to play the two green cards here. Question is whether I want to saddle, and I think with two Burrow Fiends in play, we probably do. Could path my own thing to get white mana. <laughs> Repulse is pretty gross against, like, Burrow Fiends and stuff. Well, we did mill one planes there, which is less than ideal. So, yeah, they get to Surveil 3 and Draw 3, which is pretty gross, given that we don't have them under that much pressure. I mean, this can suddenly turn into a lot of pressure, especially once Dust Animus joins the show, but... Yeah, that was a lot of awesome. Hey, look, white mana. 
Um... Yeah... Seems like the Dust Animus thing... Although I could wait to do the Dust Animus thing until they have mana up, so if I was worried about counter magic or something, but... We still have Path and Steer Clear up, so... So I think we probably do do uh, plot dust animus here. I guess I have to hit so many creatures that it kind of doesn't work out very well for us here. I mean, I do have... Yeah, all right. So let's just plot this. And then I think we end the turn. Well... You know what? I think the value of doing this is enough. All right. So if we get them to block here, we do get a two for one. So I think I'm going to go for it. And I think we want to use steer clear because we can, basically. Hold on to path for something bigger. They have so many cards, though, because of that um, plan the heist. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a nice two for one, you know, great. But they have six cards in their hand. Maybe none of them do anything? Oh, man, does that hurt. Well, we can kill Bonnie, and we want to, because Bonnie draws them cards. So we're going to go ahead. Yeah, we'll just path her now. I could wait till their upkeep, at least, so they have less mana. Yeah. That might be worth doing. Although, if they have a way to save her, it's going to hurt, to say the least. Doesn't mean we want to play the air inks now. Do I think it's better to keep them from getting a land for a turn or to risk them having a way to protect Bonnie? It's probably better to just make sure we can kill Bonnie. Yeah. Because Bonnie starts drawing them cards. Bonnie has reach. You know, none of that's, none of that's good news for us. We may fix their mana for them or ramp them here, but in the event they untap and can counter our Path to Exile or, like, any number of other things, we feel pretty bad about stuff. I do think we're going to go ahead and uh, saddle one of these. Heck, I could saddle both because, like, I'm not blocking. And the value of saddling is real. Milling our Fractured Identity is less than ideal, but... All right, so pass the turn. Oh yeah, we, we put that hold there and then decided we didn't need it. They have removal for dust animus. It's not gonna be great news for us, but our burrow fiends are gonna hit pretty hard is the good news on that front. They have so many cards in their hand that they have to think for a while, you know. <laughs> Gin of Fool's Fall. Ooh. So you took a turn off, huh? You guys are fours right now. Ooh, my. 
I don't think we're that far off from lethal, so that surprises me a, a little bit. Um... So, Sterling Supplier. Saddle with that. Isn't that just lethal? I can't believe they decided to do that. <laughs> I mean, I had to mill a couple creatures, but, like, the chances were pretty good. I mean, they didn't know I was going to play a card that could immediately, you know... They were probably thinking, well, they have to tap attackers in order to do that. But then I played a new creature, which altered the calculus, especially because I also added a counter to the board that was immediately relevant. So, yeah. If I had whiffed on, like, all those mills, then they wouldn't have taken lethal, and then their next turn would have been pretty scary, but... With all the cards in their hand, it seems like they probably had a way to impact the board more immediately and not die, but... Hmm. I mean, I think it's a keep. We have a couple of two drops. Um, it's not the best hand ever, but I don't think it's one that we have to send back either. Burrowfiends, you know... Um... They've been pretty legit. I mean, I thought they'd be good. I think I gave them a C-plus in the set review. Right now, I mean, you know, it's it's a small sample size, but I'd be giving them a B-minus if I uh, were to redo the set review right now. <laughs> Based on the, this one time I've gotten to play with it. We did play against it, too. I don't remember it being that good against us, though. I think maybe I killed it before it could be. But especially when you get both in play, like it's... And we've done that. I mean, that's been pretty lucky. If you just have one, not nearly as good. But both in play where you're milling four cards a turn, like, that's some business. What's going on here? <laughs> I can only talk about Stubborn Barofine for so long. Yeah. I mean, we really need white mana. Fortune's probably been the MVP just because it's allowed us to have such good starts. Plus, it's a rare, you know. Probably means it's on the thumbnail if you're watching this video. Um, but these Burrow Fiends have been pretty legit. I think that means we play Burrow Fiend before we play Entertainer. The only thing about playing the Entertainer is that if I draw another land... Well, I'm probably just going to play the Possum if I do that at this point. Yeah. So let's play Burrow Fiend because it makes Throw from the Saddle better. All right. They don't, they don't do a thing, which works for me. Um, do we just start milling? kind of think we do. I mean, it just starts the train ro rolling, you know? So, yeah, let's play our Rambling Possum. Oh, they might counter it. That is a possibility. They do. I've eaten a lot of Phantom Interferences so far, and haven't gotten to play with it myself yet, which is kind of sad for me. Although I haven't seen it make the token. I've just seen it counter things on turn two. Yeah, that's a problem. Kind of have to kill that because it quickly draws them a million cards. So let's throw from the saddle. Then we play Raucous Entertainer. And yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna mill. Hitting two lands, I mean we do need a fifth, but you know, we'll draw them eventually. <laughs> this another plan the heist? No, it's a lone shark, which scares me a little bit less. I think I'm gonna put this counter on Raucous Entertainer. Well, oh, this is a four. But that does mean snakeskin veil works. Yeah, so let's do that. And then this. Smashing for eight. <laughs> okay, maybe it's just maybe it's not just that you get them both in play at the same time. They do snowball kind of impressively, like. Alright, there's Jace. 
Luckily, he doesn't really protect them. He's just like a value walker. And uh, they're kind of in a spot where they need protecting. Play Lone Shark, draw a card. Well, I'm at least glad they had to run that out. Ooh, does that just mean game? That just means game. So we go plot. Oh my god! <laughs> it might still mean game, but I did just screw that up royally, as I've done before with Aloe Alchemist. The plot side's on the right, everybody. The part that says plot. Anyway, <laughs> let's do this. And... I guess we swing with everything. If only I'd actually given Trample. That would have been nice. They don't have any good blocks here, really. Because Snakeskin Veil will blow up the... Yeah. So we just use Snakeskin Veil to blow this up. But that would have been lethal with just Sterling Supplier. We kill both of these. They go to three. They need something real good not to be dead here. And if they have it, I deserve to lose because I didn't plot when I should have. So, <laughs> not, can't really complain, you know? Okay. I have too many cards for that, even after milling myself several times. So, <laughs> that's normally what Archive Trap does. Nothing. If you have Slick Shot Lock Picker like our opponent did, does the, the number does become different, but... We had them under so much pressure that they couldn't just, like, you know, not play the lock picker like they were dead. They would have been even more dead if I hadn't screwed up. <laughs> really, this is an educational service. All right, looks quite good. These three are all cards I've been impressed with in this draft. They're all in my hand, and we can cast all of them. Works pretty nicely, I think. I think we actually play Fortune on three because this can crew or saddle Fortune. Look at all those mounts. It's really a pity we didn't get more mount payoffs. We have like three, right? Would I trade a Burrow Fiend if they didn't use the mount thing here? They do use the mount thing, which I kind of expected, but... I think we attack for two here. And then play Fortune. Make sure our next draws go a little better. We don't have blue right now, but it is real hard to put Fractured Identity on the bottom of my library. So, we won't. They could have a trick here, but I think we still block. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> that has me doubting things significantly. Congregation Griff can get our life back where we need it to be. We'll be okay. Well, we attack with fortune. Let's find that blue mana. Not much to think about, I don't think. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> just supposed to take it. Okay. Um, I think we're happy with both of those. We need life, because we started out so far behind. Next, I mean, I'm playing Congregation Griff this turn. 
Then next turn we probably play Possum plus Air Inks plus Attack with the Griff. It'll be massive. Um, so I'm not going to be casting these anytime soon. But this is good with lifelink. This gains us life. I think we probably, probably just leave things as is. Play our Congregation Griff. So the problem is I think our opponent has a trick and makes blocking hard. I don't really want to give up any of my mounts because they gain me so much life if our Griff is allowed to attack. But I do have two more in my hand that I can play next turn. There is a plus two, plus zero effect in this format. Hmm. So, as good as Burrow Fiend has been, it doesn't feel like it's the one that we want to uh, hold on to here. Um... Yeah. Now what happens? Bad things, probably. Well, we go to one is what happens. Because we get rid ridden down. Okay. Well. Let's play our air inks. And our possum. This is the one we want to come back untapped because it's bigger. Drop them to nine. Bring these two back. I do pretty much have to block. I think we'd rather have Dust Animus first. This is going to be a close one, I think. Um, I might just be able to kill them with Allo Alchemist next turn, like if they can't kill us here, but I have a feeling, being a red-white deck, that there's a good chance we die here. Gotta say, the mount deck does seem pretty good. Um, we played against good versions of it. We played a pretty good version of it, I think. So yeah, obviously we've got a block here. Like, there's not really a way for us to avoid it. We can block in such a way... Let's see if they have a trick to kill us. They drop us to three. Do they have Skewer the Critics to finish us off? Freaking bonus sheet card. <laughs> That's cheating. Okay. Well, I don't see a bonus sheet card. Um, How much can we swing for with Congregation Griff here? Kind of a lot. Yeah. Okay. So... We're going to plot this time, everybody. I wonder if it would have been better to do that differently in retrospect. So then we play... Do I want to play Dust Animus? Probably. Because I want to attack with Trained Airings here. Oh, it doesn't... That was dumb. I mean, I was going to play Dust Animus either way, but yeah. So then we crew this. So 
So they can kill Fortune here. Um, and they do have to block Fortune. I'm trying to decide, was it just better to attack with all three the normal way? Dust Animus comes back untapped, so... It is kind of funny that we could potentially eventually set up... Um, so double strike. Am I more afraid of double strike? Are all our creatures mounts? No, Dust Animus isn't, so we need to kill the Key Keeper. At some point, it might come back with the counters and stuff. I mean, probably not, given things, but, you know. We are at 10 now. All right, so you killed that. That has double strike. Four, I think it is for eight here, potentially. Whew. <laughs> that got close at the end, uh, but in the end, the, the mounts did it. All right, one game left. We're either going to win seven or go six and three. Okay, pretty nice hand. It is funny, the one game where we cast Fractured Identity is one of the ones we lost. <laughs> but yeah, we have all of our mana. We've got a two drop. I mean, obviously, we'd like to draw some more early action, but there's a decent chance we do. All right, well, that gives us something to do on turn three after we play a Raucous Entertainer. There's something to be said for playing the Animus and just sticking a counter on it. Depending on what the board looks like, I guess I might do that. Just play this as a two-mana 3-4 flyer, basically. Um, instead of holding onto it for later. Especially because we have Take Up the Shield in our hand. That all makes it kind of interesting. I definitely don't play it here, because, you know, I can do something else. Um, and it being a 3-4 is, like, a pretty big difference. It gets it out of range of most of the removal in red-green. I think we just take two. Ooh. That card is bad news. Bad, bad news. Okay. Yeah, I mean, playing it as a 3-4 is good, I guess, but there's way too many things where it doesn't work out. So I'm kind of leaning towards playing Hard Bristle Bandit and putting a counter on it. So if they play a 4-power creature here, things get real bad for us real fast because they make a 3-1. But there's not really anything I can do about it. I mean, I guess if they play the 4-power creature in their first main phase... Yeah, maybe I do have to play Dust Animus here. Or it'll just be too late later. We'd have a few other ways to put it into play as a bigger creature later between our Possum Mount and our um, uh, Loyal Steed. Yeah, all right. So let's play Dust Animus. It's kind of what we have to do because there's too many situations where they completely run away with it if we don't. They still could. But it's less likely. <laughs> Do I wish I had take up the shield mana? Yeah, okay. They've got the derailment, but they at least don't get the uh, huge creature right away. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Now we can play two creatures this turn and buff them both, which works for me, I think. Oh, no, we can't. No, we cannot. Well, I still think it's what we do, but... That means we just attack for two, I think. Eh. Hmm. 
At this point, I think trying to trade Rockus Entertainer is probably worth doing. Well, that's bad. So now they get a 3-1 and a... Which modes did they pay for? I guess just the treasure mode? Because for the extra combat step, they would have needed five mana. So, yeah. So we just take a hit here. Uh-oh. Things are getting real sketchy real fast. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think we're about to get run over here. I kind of have to leave man up for take up the shield in order to not die, but if I do that, I, I probably die. So it's kind of complicated, you know? So... I guess we're going to play Sterling Supplier. I guess making this a 3-3 makes the most sense. Yeah, we get a treasure. So they're going to ping us when they attack us. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, we'll let them do it. It's early in the format. I'll let them do it. We're dead. So, <laughs> so it saddle, I can't believe it's saddle one. I mean, it does cost six. I guess that evens things out a little. Uh, but yeah, they do that. They attack and then they can make two copies. The good news is they enter tapped and attacking. So the plunderers aren't gonna ping us. Um, <laughs> uh, can we actually survive this turn? I almost want to, just uh I don't think so. We do somehow survive. Oh, no, we don't. It's five. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to stop enough of it. Oh, no, I was right. It's four. <laughs> now they're probably mad that I let them do it. When in reality, I would have just scooped right away. But, but yeah, we can't win. Well, that was the only game where we got completely manhandled, I think. Um, they just had too fast of a start to deal with all of our threats. You know, if we had stuck that Dust Animus, things things would have been a little different, but we didn't. It was a really good deck, though. You know, my early early impressions of the mount deck is that it's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this draft video. I think another one will go up this Sunday.